Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Jansen. We're going to continue some of the little things that I showed you here. I like to do small videos, show you some of the techniques that I use. Um, of course, I don't have a chance here on this channel to show you everything I do. If you do want to learn and get into some classes, we have a lot of online classes. There are and and sometimes they come on specials. And go over and check that. Uh, you can check them out on Jansen Art online.com or the store if you want to go look at that where all the specials are is jansenartstore.com so go look at those two places and you'll see and I do a lot of classes on a lot of things and uh, uh, I want to share you and uh, share with you today just a little bit of the techniques that I use in some of those classes okay so today what I want to do is I want to decorate this tray right here I'm going to use an acrylic technique I only paint with acrylics like I you know it seems like every time I post a video out there everyone comments on there below which I appreciate I appreciate the comments okay uh, I love the comments and uh, but they always comment on there using oil or acrylic I only paint in acrylic everything I do is heritage multimedia acrylic I used to be an artist an oil artist and I gave that up 20 years ago uh, because of health concerns and stuff but so I only use acrylics today and uh, the heritage multimedia acrylics is all I use so I have a lot a large variety of techniques that I use and I'm going to show you one today a, a, a uh, a uh, acrylic technique and also a glazing technique today as we paint this one right here so these trays I paint a lot of these trays um, I sell a lot of these trays this is a this is a tray uh, I just did the other day um, it's the same type of metal tray and, and stuff and this is all pure acrylic these flowers on here are pure acrylic they, like I said that's all I use I used a different technique on this one that I'm going to use today um, and I have, you know, when I paint the trays, I have a variety of about 20 different acrylic techniques that make them look like oils or, you know, and it's not just toss extender into your, into your paint and slow it down. I get those kinds of questions. No, it's different types of optical effects. I am an optical painter. I'm not a blender. I don't blend. Uh, everyone thinks you got to blend, 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 and you don't have to. You paint optically. You paint for the human eye and, and the human eye will do the blending for you. And so I use all these different tips uh, you know techniques and little tricks to do that kind of stuff this is another one done completely with acrylic and when i started to and it looks like it's painted in oils it looks like it's blended and stuff and it's not um when i started painting these trays you know i would sell these things i'd get maybe a hundred dollars for them now a tray that's like this that takes me about an hour and a half or so to paint i sell for trays like this go for six hundred dollars this one will probably be just a little less because it's a little smaller here's another one that's just gone up actually into our online gallery for i think it's right around six hundred dollars as well so i paint all different sizes and stuff and if you want to see some of the trays that i have done these are what are called my signature line trays you're something that i'm really known for doing Doing. Uh, you can go over to our jansenartgallery.com you can click on there and you can see the trays and you can also look back through past trays that I've sold uh, I put up um, 50 trays uh, here just the other day we that we uh, sold this year we sold 50 of these trays to, to to our collectors and stuff this year they're very very popular so I want to show you how I, I go about this is another size this is a little 12 inch scallop edge and before you go comment and ask where do you get all these trays you have to find them I go out to antique stores and you know we hunt them down all over the east coast they're very popular on the east coast of America but you can find them just about everywhere go to garage sales go to this uh, you know they're all over the east coast um, and you find them they're usually in terrible condition and then you have to re uh, you have to do what I call recondition the tray for for decoration today and uh, that is a process and so into the online uh, classroom that I have on decorating trays there's a C600 C601 I think it is there's where I do like six or seven trays in there I have a new one that's coming up with tw with uh, 10 different trays in it that class will be coming up here in the next uh, couple of weeks but those inside of those those classes I show you how to how to do you know to recondition trays and you know how to design them 
And I'd love to have more people doing them because these are very, very popular. They're very historical. They're, they've been around forever and ever and ever. As you know, as decorative artists and artists, you know, we've always painted trays, and they're a lot of fun. So anyway, let's get into some techniques here. So I'm going to uh, to uh, use the acrylics, and so I just squirted out some of the acrylics. One of the pigments that I'm going to use, one of the things that I'm going to do, because uh, I have my six color set with, uh, and I added to the six color set a couple of colors here. I added the pine green, the burnt sienna, and the uh, quinacridone violet. All the links to everything that I use are always put right down below the video here, okay? so. You know, if, if you're looking for some of that, if you want to try some of this stuff out, there's the links. And we suggest you go get them on Amazon. We have all of the stuff up on Amazon now, and there's the links right there to Amazon. It's it's really, they give you a good price, and it's it's a good, uh, you know, if you're a Prime member, you get free shipping. So that's pretty good, too. But uh, anyway, one of the pigments I want to introduce you to today is one specifically designed for this type of technique. This is what's called Indian Yellow. It's a very old uh, uh, pigment itself. It was called PY-139. It was uh, really made popular during the Dutch Golden Age uh, period from the basically in the 17th century. And uh, artists use it just about for everything. But one of the uh, most important things about it, it's a yellow-orange, and it's very powerful, and it's a glazing color. And so it's made for glazing. And so I'm going to use it for a glazing today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint up mostly acrylic. I'm going to grab my little, I have my little in and out cup of ham, in and out hamburger cup here full of water and I'm just going to use water and put out my acrylics just like this and we'll do a little bit of simple decorations first what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out a rose here and I'm just going to use water here and some white and I want this to dry fairly fast so I can do some glazing glazing is a is a technique that I've done for years and years and years. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and say, okay, I'm going to put my rose right about in here someplace. Okay. Now I've just base coated this tray with um, uh, some uh, medium white and a little gray. It's basically white, black, and yellow. And so I've just lightly base coated it. I'm not my background's not done. I'm going to add some colors and stuff to it as well. But I'm going to do some do it with the glazes and stuff. So here I'll put a rose in here. It's a generally it's a, a circular sh shape. My gaze, I'm going to set the gaze here. Now that's very important where you put that gaze of that rose because you want the viewer when you're looking at a tray to to move around the tray. So at some point down through here, you've got to set a gaze, maybe set another rose, maybe set another flower. It could be, it could be anything, any kind of flower. But uh, you want to set the gaze maybe down to here, you know, something like this, so it turns it around. And let's put a smaller flower out over here. Maybe this is going to be a little bud or something sitting out there. And uh, maybe we'll do a couple of small little, or almost blossom type flowers around. Those are always... Whenever I add those to trays, they always seem to sell very well. So we'll do some blossom type flowers around here. And I mean, if you notice, I'm just real casual with this. I want this just light. I want to smear it around. I want it to dry here fairly quickly here so I can uh, do some glazing with it as well. I try to set myself time limits for uh, when when I do paintings like this and what that does is that keeps me from playing too much into the painting because if you're an artist like me you know if it stays wet I'll sit there and play with it and that's one of the reasons why I love to, to paint with acrylics I want them to dry there are things that I do with global colors You'll see in all the other videos, you know, it's not all of them, but some of the other videos that I do here on the channel and on our other websites I do uh, with Globals. And, you know, those are oil emulations. Those are made to make the colors slow down so you can get more of a, 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 you know, paint the feeling of an oil. Now you paint the feeling of the oil. I can paint the look of an oil with an acrylic. That's no problem because we use the same colors. It's just a different tech optical type of technique. Um, so I can paint that same type of that same type of feeling and stuff with that. But what I want to do is a um, uh, is to 
control the drying time and I'm a production painter and, and some things I want to dry really really fast okay so I'm going to take a three quarter inch brush here and I'm going to work into a little bit of extender here just a little well let's just do it water here first it all depends on what you want to do if I want my background to stay wet and work my my um my colors of my flowers into my background I would use a little bit of extender this is the stuff that slows it down and depending on what technique you do with this extender you can slow it down from 20 minutes to you know 30 hours it all depends on how you use that particular extender what technique you just don't toss it into the paint and think it's going to do everything no there's different types of layering and different types of techniques you do with it to, to really slow it down okay but if i put a little bit of this around here we'll put just a little bit of water here i'm just using my water i'm just going to moisten that up a bit i want to use a a dirty brush of a i love my burnt siennas and stuff those colors maybe we'll toss a little indian yellow in that too today just for some giggles and we'll, we'll make some what i call some contrast strokes and this makes it a very contemporary look to your uh, to your tray here and where you put some of this stuff through it's just it just adds so much to your painting here but uh, i want this to be very loose very rough and you know it's i want to maybe pull the power of the of it through here this direction here something like that and you can take your finger or your paper towel and soften it off you know you can pull some of it out you can get rid of the streaks but i like to leave a certain amount of the streaks because that's power and interest to the design and that makes it look you know very very different and it may look like a lot now but when you paint the flowers and stuff that will slowly disappear and soften up you might want to take um depending on the colors of your flowers sometimes if i use a color like this i'll take a cool version a cool color a co anything that appears cool so we'll take some phthalo blue here and a little bit of white we'll toss in a little of this color i do that for harmony what's called harmony to your colors so that the two go together, okay? And I might put a little bit of that blue color streaking through or hitting into a few areas back here. And when, since they have that, I don't need that extender. I put that over there, I gotta get rid of that. You just need some water. And I'll just toss a little bit of that around and see that'll put a little bit of this blue. I like that. Let's put a, a stronger strike of that maybe right up through here and see this is some of the contemporary looks I just lighten the pressure on my brush here and I pull through here you just lighten the pressure and if you're using these fusion brushes they're so soft they're made for this type of stuff and that just works real fine so you already start to you could see where you start to get an oil look in there or something like that you know I'm going to um, before I continue on with some of this uh, you know building this flower and stuff again I'm going to restate and I restate my whites up here and what that does is going to give me a little bit more white here and then I'll just push the edges off into my transparent my background now what this does is this will allow when I go to tint this will allow this flower to really show up brighter so the more white you put down really the better because you're going to tint it down we're going to use a tinting technique which is an old old technique it really um you know started out in the dutch golden age and then uh, when they started you know if you ever heard of the chippendale trays and stuff they used a lot of tinting techniques in chippendale styles stuff those are pretty styles of painting and we'll put a little bit into here just to get some some light colors back into those backgrounds i like this this movement see and uh, working that in working that around and you can just use your finger to do what we call shear the paint off and you can see that makes it look almost blended almost like an oil i'm just using water here just using water okay so we'll let that kind of tack up there for just a minute while that's tacking up getting that we'll uh, set some maybe some leaf shapes and stuff around here let's take some pine green and a little bit of our burnt sienna so we get that burnt sienna harmony right in here and we'll use that to uh, 
set up some leaf shapes. Now, with the leaf shapes, like I've showed you on other things, sometimes I like to put it on there. If I have a light source that's coming from one side or not, you know, I, I generally, if it's a light source coming from one side, I'll pull off some of the color off of that one side and, or blur one side. I like that loop, but right before it starts to dry, I blur it off like that. And if you have a good quality acrylic, it'll do that. It won't, it won't pull a hole. It'll just lift off like that. So I'll pull off a, a little bit there. And uh, let's put another little one sitting right off over here. I can go back and rework these again. This is just an idea, design idea. And usually as I get down towards the base of the flower, I'll get my... my uh, my leaves and, and stuff a little bit bigger. Before I do that, let me grab a little more burnt sienna into that. And uh, let's see, the tray, we'll want to orient the tray like this. So I'm going to drop a stem right with the chisel of my brush off here like this. We'll grab just a little bit of stem movement. I like stems in there. Sometimes I take a little burnt sienna right on the edge using just the chisel and I'll make like a little thorn or so into the where roses you know will have that and I'll put one or two around and uh, kind of like those they just they add interest you know I, I remember uh, once of my students you know they always ask me you know oh how long did it take you to do that and I remember my teacher my mentor before he passed away he used to always have a uh, wonderful saying it said yeah it took me two hours and 28 years of practice so <laughs> you know it these are these are fun and easy techniques and i know it it looks like it's really really easy when i do it but i do these all the time and it, that's all it is it's just practice um but anyway so let's go in and and let's do it this is almost dry it's not completely dry it's almost dry but these down here are pretty much dry I'm going to go do a little tinting. So I think what I'm going to do is put it in wet this time. So I'm going to use some extender into my tint. So what, what, why do this? Well, this will keep a wet yellow as I tint these flowers. And I can work other colors into them and soften that yellow out just a bit. Now I can also do that pure acrylic with, and I've showed you in other videos that I've posted up here on the channel, I can do a pure acrylic as well. Um, with uh, just water and use different shear techniques but this is another one i like to use but this is where indian yellow shines it is made to do exactly this to, to glaze like this so if i want to put some yellow into the rose here i'll glaze it now there's all different kinds of ways to glaze these things but uh you know and i can i can you know, why glaze? Well, you can make a different intensity of one in one area real easy just by grabbing a little bit more. So if I wanted to intensify the bottom of the rows down here, which is, you know, with more yellow down like that, I can just pick up more of this or let this dry and glaze it again, you know, but uh, I like to walk this around a little bit, make this a color of common common color so you know I'll even hit little areas of it onto the leaf you know you can just put some of it into there it, it works so well and Indian yellow is specifically made to glaze where I change all of that to yellow without disrupting any of that internal stuff going on there now one color I love to use with Indian yellow is the quinacridone violet the uh, and I'm going to put some Indian yellow and quinacridone violet together here and I'll use that to start the center part of my rose so I'm going to come into here and let that quinacridone violet cool the side of my rose here a bit I'll make it a little deeper down inside my rose so I pick up a little more color on the corner of my brush and I just lighten up my brush you can see where it's heavy on one corner lighter on the other just more transparent and I'll just use the transparent side of the brush at some point I want to come down in here and I want to deposit the uh, main shadow of the bowl of the rose down here and carry that up and around and I can let this dry and retint again, but I love how those two colors work together in the uh, in a rose like this. They work really well. Let's put some around in there. Let's uh, 
go over and draw this one. So I put it up onto the corner like this, and I slide through, and I've got a transparent Indian yellow on one side, and that one's sliding into that side there. That allows me to put the deep, cool color into the center. I can put on a stroke or two for the rose. I could use my finger out here if I want to soften it and do what we call shear the colors. Shear the colors together and make it look just like you've just painted with an oil there. If I push too much like this or if I push a lot, I start to blend it in just like an oils. And I don't like to blend that stuff in. It just looks too flat if you do it too much. So just a little is enough. A little is enough. Let's put a bit here. We'll make a little blossom. Let's put a touch of yellow over onto that side there and just push it around a bit. That's all I want to do is just push that around. Okay. So I could have a bit more of a cool color right there on the bowl. And that's what I like to do is to take that. Let me put this so we don't get that glare. Um, that's a little too high. Here we go. Um, so I can put that over here, but I do want to establish really the cool shadow side here, right down here like this. And I'll just stroke this on. And I want this to start tacking up and and see when it starts to tack up, you get these little dry marks and stuff like that. You can still push the color and soften it out, but I want it to get tacky and sticky so I can uh, stroke my color. Now see, why do you want to do that? Well. A lot of painters, a lot of artists, when we start to paint like this, they will put on the white and then it disappear. And you put on the white and it disappear. And put on white and it disappear. That's because the white is getting eaten up by the other colors that are underneath it. So if I'm painting acrylic, though, you know, and I watch oil artists do it all the time, they, they just lose their whites. But if I'm painting acrylic, I just let it tack up a bit, and then I can get the power of that white with one or two strokes onto it afterwards. As long as I let this start to tack up, it won't have quite as much as the blending power, and I can paint faster. So, you know, that's as I as I started to want to paint faster and more casual, I'm, you know, I realized that oils can't do it for me. For me. There's other people that will disagree with me, and that's okay. But um, for me, I like to do it with acrylics and faster with acrylics. So I'm going to put a little Indian yellow right into my, my white here. I do have my brighter Hansa, which is quite pretty because it's a different type of yellow. Maybe we'll put a little bit of that over here too. I'm going to pick up some white brush, model those together, tap those together, and we'll make the main strike of the flower here, of the rose, right there like that. That nice heavy color. And see, I struck that on that, and it didn't get eaten up by anything because I'm letting the underside layer tack, and, tack up here. And so then we'll come around. Now let's put just a soft little backside back here to the flower. Open the flower up a bit. And I can push my finger down in there to, to incorporate those colors together. If I want to, I can darken it down. I can pick up a little bit of quinacridone in here if I want and make a, a prettier little, you know, set of inside petals in there. I can darken it down more. Uh, it's easiest if I let it just tack up just a bit, start to dry up just a bit, then uh, I don't have a problem with blending and I'm trying not to have blending. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that and some white right here in the brush. I'll pick up a little texture just by by pick, pushing back just a bit so I fill up the edge of my brush. That allows me to really stroke in the, the reaching petal here of the, uh, of the rose, which is what I'm going to pull out and pull in. Right before I get to that bowl, I start to lift off here. And I'll put in the nice, what we call a transitional petal right here. It starts to turn your eye. I'll cool it down because I'm coming over to the shadow side of the rose. So I'll cool this down just with that quinacridone. Let that get kind of lost over there like that, just like that. Let's go back. Let's wipe that out of our brush because we got that cool color in there. Reset some warm, some yellow, some warm, some light. And uh, we'll drop that in right here. Got a little bit of that pink in there, but that's not too bad. Maybe push that edge right there like that, and that'll soften that out. So now I've set that those petals in. I'm going to let those dry up for just a minute. 
so that I don't blend too much into that because I don't want to blend. And I'm going to come in, grab myself to the other side here. Let's go a little bit more yellow, a little more Indian yellow. Change the color down just a bit here. And we'll make a little a bud here down this side. So I'll put some on that side. And I'm not even going to worry about that because I'm going to come in here with some quinacridone here. And let's just stroke through that and put a cooler side right there. Maybe give that a little bit of the brush it with the finger there a bit. And we'll let that kind of set up and tack for a second. Let's come over to the other side over here. Let's drop this as the cooler side. We'll add a little more cool color down onto that one. So that's dropping down here and uh, wipe that cool color out of my brush. Go back to, you know, it's maybe a little Hansa, so this is a touch different. A little bit of white, model that into the brush here and make my big strike. Lift the pressure and let it come right into this cool color right there. We'll go back, pick up a little more light color here. Let's set the outside petal coming in. We won't make this quite as big a rose as the other one because the other one's the queen and then as I go here towards the cool color I'm just going to reach down right here to my cool color and we're going to pinkify that up there and uh, that's one thing you do when you paint you create all kinds of new words too we're going to pinkify it okay so we're going to wipe that cool color out of the brush let's go back to our warm here reset that and work that in and you can push that to incorporate that into the bowl I can take some of that nice soft little pink just push around a little bit of movement here in and out use the corner of the brush this is a number 10 flat too I love to paint with a 10 I like to paint with too big a brush because that causes me to use corners and edges and then I got to figure out how to get something in there and I like that. I like that. So we'll get a little bit of this light here. Pull that edge right there. That's kind of nice. Now let's um, set up a touch more white into this. So we'll pick up some more white. We're going to take our flower a little bit more to the white side here. Get a fresh paper towel. A little more white. Heavier white. See, I'm picking up more paint now too. And I want to strike the next petal here and just pull down. Maybe pull this side of the bowl like this. Your brush pulls this way to make the bowl of the rose. But then you want to incorporate that. You do what I call incorporate that so you don't, uh, um, you know, lose all of your shadow. Just kind of thin out that white a bit there. And sometimes I will stroke this two or three times to get the, the look that I want. Sometimes I will pick up a little edge of that color and maybe hit one edge of the rose to put a little more light interest right up there on that side of it. It all depends on, you know, I paint all different kinds of roses. It all depends on the look that I want them to have here. So let's put a little lighter petal right in here. Just drop that in. That'll be kind of pretty one right there. And uh, Maybe we'll go more to just pure white here. Step off to a dry spot of your palette. Just pick up the white acrylic here and just use the chisel of your brush and just pull down. Kind of start out here a little wider and pull down, finding that bowl, bringing it into that bowl and leaving just that edge there like that. And I'll take that edge and maybe travel it just a bit. But as we get past here, we really got to get to our pinks again because we're starting to get down to our cool. So we can lighten our pinks as well. And we can get our cooler, lighter pinks down here. So just because it's cool doesn't mean it has to stay dark here. Okay, so that works on that one. Let's uh, wipe our brush here. I just pinched that color out here. You notice I don't do a lot of rinsing my brush. I really don't. Um, We'll build the bowl here a little lighter. That's a little heavy right there. So what you do is you have two ways of doing it. One is you can shear the paint with your finger. 
The second way is you can pick up some of your pink color here. Take some of your quinacridone, some of your pink, maybe a little yellow right into it. Just lift off right into there, push that in. I like to do sometimes both, just like that, and, and pick up both, running right through the, the flower to get all different kinds of uh, little movement. Now, I'd love to stroke another petal in there right now, but it's so wet. It is so wet. And look at my hands. <laughs> it's so wet that it will uh, eat up the white that I'm doing. And then by the time I'm done, the whole front of the flower is white. So I'm going to let the acrylic dry up for a minute, tack up, and I'll put another petal in there really easy. This is the one thing that, you know, in all the years I painted in oils, it just frustrated me, you know, when I would start to blend and blend and blend, and then the color has gone. And uh, now I don't have to. So see, this is tacked up and all into here. And I can come in here and add a light little petal up here on this edge really nice. I can just shear that off and make that look, have some nice interest, a little bit of almost a blended kind of look to it a bit. Let's put a lighter pink petal here onto this side right down here. Here, that's kind of pretty. That'll pull that in. And we'll pull it into the bowl there. Maybe just a little bit of light color interest in there. Or maybe a light color, little light color pink edge to the to the edge of that little blossom there. And it makes a pretty little blossom. I could have more out there, but uh, I might put a little bit of light color. Wipe my brush. A little more yellow. A little bit. Just a, a little bit of color movement out there for that flower. So you don't know quite what's going on. Let's go work on this one. Light color back again. Some of my yellow, maybe a little Hansa, so it's a bit of a different yellow flower. Just a little bit different. And I could dry this and retint if I want to. Or put extender into that tinting and do different things. You know, there's all kinds of ways to do that. That's uh, not quite light enough. I'm going to step over and get a little bit lighter. I like the power of a light stroke onto the flower. Here. And... And we'll pull down and then what happens as we get over here we've got to head to our pinks because we want that that light and cool to stay into the flower there right we want that to stay in there and uh, then we'll go over here to our light colors again let's uh, put in a lighter almost white uh, front here light front and Right there, I could I could push it. I could shear the colors, what we call shear the color off there. I could put a little bit of pink and pull that right along the edge. There's a thousand ways in which you can do it. You could let it dry and tint it and put something else in. I'm just going to put in a little color and then just push like that. That's all I do is I push. And when I'm pushing, I'm always pushing in the shape of the bottom of that bowl. That is the most important part, you know. You can go in there and push. Now, you need a high enough quality acrylic that you, when you push, you don't have, you don't pull a hole. And some of your, you know, your bottled acrylics can't do this. And I'm sorry, I wrote a lot of books with bottled acrylics. I used them for years and years. And they do a lot of great things. But they don't have enough pigment in them to do this type of pushing to it, okay? So, uh, and they just pull a hole. Uh, it just, you know, there's... All of them, all paints have all places in the industry. They really do. And you need to find one that, that works with what you want to do. Here I'm just going to add a little bit of this light. And this is what I call the short stroking highlights here. I just add those back. I'm going to pop that edge right in there. Do Sometimes I like to take just almost a pure white like I did onto that one there. And just put a, a chisel of that to come down to make that look like a a little chiseled edge, let's just pull it in there. A little different uh, type of, of rose petal on that one there. I like that. Um, now this is starting to tack up there. Let's see if we can sneak in a little more light stroke right up on top and bring that one up a bit. Maybe a bit more yellow, maybe a bit of pink right here as we come over to that side like that. Maybe push just a little bit yeah that's gonna push too much there let's stroke that back and push just a little bit there 
bring out that shadow and reset that sh that shadow. I always like to make sure I can clearly see that shadow in the bowl. And let's go to that white chisel again. Let's reset that one. Maybe put another one here like that. Just go right down onto the chisel. Let that brush just kind of do the work there. Let's put a little bit of pink. That's kind of drying up there a bit. So we'll get just a touch more. A little bit of pink, light pressure with the brush. There, drop that in. So that puts another little layer on there. I could have one more if I wanted to. Let's get a little yellow, a little white. Let's just drop a big strike right there. And just kind of leave that. That's, that's kind of pretty with that light built up right there. We can restate, like I did on some of the others, you can restate some of your lights out here. Maybe I want to come in and restate this pink just a bit, a little bit of light on it. I always, I always like to go back several times and revisit my center of interest flower, finding some of those colors. I'm just going to push that off. If the paint really dries up a lot, you can push really easy, but you got to let it tack up quite a bit. Um, because that's coming up over this other rose, I'll put a little more highlight right here. Just, just chisel the brush down. And that's what I call the optical. See, I, that's, those values are within two of each other, what we call on the value scale. And I show all of this in the classes. And if you want to really learn how to do it, go sign up on one of my online classes there. It's a lot of fun. We'll, um, but I'll, it's within two, so I wouldn't touch it. It's those will dry down, and then it'll look... That'll look amazing. It makes it look like you know what you're doing. You got to learn that not everything needs to be blah, 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 blended out. Okay? It can, the eye, human eye, you step away from it, and it can the human eye can do that as well. So, you know, those that that's a different way of looking at it, and it's, it works very, very well. Now, so I got that in there. Now what I've got to do is I'm going to kick some contrast. I started that up there. So I'm going to take that, and that's dry down in here now. I'm going to take that, but though, and I'm going to uh, do this. And one thing I like to show you about Heritage. Heritage, I can take some water like this. This is dry. Okay, this is all dry. And I can take some water, though, and reconstitute with dirty water with a pink finger. And reconstitute the paint, though, see? Even though that's dry, we can reconstitute the paint. So you can, if you want to, on a wet color, because it's starting to reconstitute right here, you can come back and pick that up. Now I'm going to pick up a little green. I'm going to pick up a little quinacridone. I, most of the time I use red violet for something like this. I'm going to add a little water to that. And I do what I call negative painting in and around the center of interest of the flower here. And drop some of that tone of a darker version of that tone in there, and that creates a lot of contrast within the flowers here. And let's just grab a little water right here, maybe a little bit of this blue into that, so it's a bit different. Let's put a little negative painting right here. Negative painting means you're painting the background, and that helps you shape up your flowers a bit here. Let's just shape up this one here, and drop some of that movement back in there. Shear that off. I like to do that. Let's drop some right in here before I go put paint that blossom in there. We'll just drop some of that motion of that movement in there. If you want to soften it out, just pick up anything that's like your blue background and just go over it. See how that softens it? Because I had blue underneath there, so my blue will soften anything that I use. And you got to decide, you know, just to how much contrast and stuff you want to have within your within your painting. If I want more, I might even touch into that red violet, which is the ultimate contrast cool color on your palette. Makes that really, really, really dark color here. And you can use that in a few touches to really add some dark color contrast, see, within the painting. So there's a lot of different ways. But I'm going to put a lighter, uh, I want to put a blossom down there and I want to put a lighter leaf here. So Let's take some of our Hansa and our green and a little bit of our white, which uh, I'm kind of running out of my white, so I'm going to need to put out a little bit more here. here. Get through this painting here. 
and we'll make a lighter green color that will set right in here. That'll be a leaf shape. We'll drop right in there. And I'll just push it into some of that, that dark there right now. We'll see what that looks like in a minute. We'll tone some of that down. I'm a big advocate of always using uh, different colors and, uh, you know, toning them different colors of your leaves and stuff. And let's just grab some of that and just push it around like it's like it's leaves, but we don't need to to make the leaves here. And let's just increase the size of this one. We started that one there. Increase the size of that. And we'll put a few more over here. Get a little bit of brownish color into that. I like to get very playful with the leaves. I don't like the leaves to, to, to uh, you know, take too long. Their job is just to accent the painting. That's all I like it to do. And uh, so I don't like them to to dominate the painting and and so I don't spend a whole lot of time with them. I like to do these little things, little chisel works, and I call it the little brush dance around. And uh, boy, that took me the longest time to get the confidence just to tack a painting like that and do something like that. I'm gonna put a bit of that contrast coming from the shadow of this leaf right around that and pop up this edge of the of the rose there a bit. So you see I'm lifting that whole side of the rose there. Now let's just make some pretty um, pretty petals here. I'm going to give my brush a quick rinse because I'm probably going to do a real soft pale violet. So some blue and some uh, quinacridone. And we'll go a lot of white here. Let's make a soft kind of a violet color here. That'd be pretty into these with a little bit of that yellow coming around. This would be a nice compliment here. So we'll give just a bit of that and we'll push it around that center there like that. We had another one right here because we do want to carry the color around. So we'll have a bit of that color coming in there. That's kind of nice. You can touch that color though. You know, touch it through other areas of the painting here just as a as a thought, you know, just to carry it around the painting. Here's a thought. You can take violets like this and add them as little touches of color to like your rose, like your rose picks up just a bit of that color. It's pretty. As you go to your center of interest run, try to have it a little bit lighter so it doesn't appear heavy. So I always um, lighten it up when I come to my center of interest one. So it's uh, just a little whisper of it there picking that up and if you put something on like that and you know it's like oh I hit that front pedal and I did and it, and it uh, uh, doesn't look so great sitting on the front of that pedal so I'll just take a little pink and a little bit of yellow and I'll just push that pedal right back up on top there just like that so I'll come right back up on top there and that'll work now let's go more violet and light color here and let's make our little blossoms here. We'll start one side right. I always like to push the light color of the blossom towards the center of interest, which is that rose, that main rose. So I'll pull, push and pull. Let's get a little more violet color here, softer, right out like that. Just kind of tap around that center a bit. Makes a nice soft little flower. And uh, we'll come right up over. I'm going to set this petal right on top of that rose. So it gives you a layering effect to your floral here, which is kind of nice. And then we'll let these outside petals here just kind of fade away a bit. Let's put a maybe an angled edge of one here like that so it makes it look a little turned here like that. There we go, so it turns down just a bit. I could have a smaller blush of that color right out through here. Just other movements and stuff of it, but it's pretty little, pretty little color. I like how uh, those colors just, I mean, it just adds. I could put a touch of that light violet here, maybe on the back side of this, this one here, especially anytime that you come near that 
the pink side because it's that violet already has the pink in it so it already has that quinacridone violet in it so it works real well let's uh, brighten up our greens coming down the home stretch here brighten up our greens here and um, get these a lot lighter here we'll grab that and stroke that in sometimes I like to use a little chisel and put a little mark for a vein line like that I've used all different kinds of techniques different types of things I paint these trays um, you know and I've done them for years and and now they're just really popular and um, and like I say take a moment and go over and take a look at some of them and some of that I've sold I have all of them that I've sold this year up on there um, but you can look at uh, the trays and get some ideas for designs and stuff like that or or how I go about painting something you know that'll help you uh, artists that are starting out or want to find a career in something like this and um, you know it just it just helps now so that sits there I probably would put a little more of a get rid of that green out of my brush even though green does look really nice in roses it really does and I'm just gonna pop up that white on that rose right there just a bit more maybe put just a soft pink in my brush just to incorporate that right there just like that but I'll leave that uh, that real powerful light stroke right there and that's that's what we call getting in more optical I don't need to blend that off that's all dry in there I don't need to blend that all off I might even state that white just a little bit more right on the edge of this of this uh, petal here and pop that one off just a bit more right like that I do like that one and um, let's pop just a bit more contrast right into this one so sometimes I leave them really soft sometimes I pop them off I do all different kinds of things I play with all different color combinations um, and uh, you know color is very important in the history of color I've studied all my life I st actually started out as a colorist before I became an artist I worked as a colorist for paint companies making uh, making colors and um, you know now that I'm really into the painting this works I, I like it so much more but I still love the history and the working of color I'm just gonna put a little more of that quinacridone right down here in the corner of my brush and drop just a touch more of that slightly darker that will increase the, the contrast right in the throat of the flower there and if I do that let's uh, let's just take a and I can go about and glaze this too I could because this is all pretty much dry all through here I could just you could go back to a glaze like I did with the Indian yellow I could uh, put a light coat of my extender over the surface there put a bit of the quinacridone on the edge there and just put a, a softer quinacridone glaze of that shadow color on that side of the flower there like that that works very well let's put a little yellow warm it up up right right up in here so see I can reglaze some of that and add some of that movement and then I always like to do what I call sink that glaze in with little touches of light and that sinks the glaze into the uh, into the flower a bit more I like that and that works there we go that has that in there like that now for the um, let's take a bit of that quinacridone put that on our brush here touch that into the center of those little blossoms there just push that around this is your cool color so keep it on the shadowy side here cool color here like this tap that around let it be kind of mottled and different and just kind of add a bit of it brush it around a bit you know just don't get too too wild let's take a bit of burnt of uh, Hansa and a little burnt sienna maybe even a little Indian yellow in that we're just gonna take some of these yellows model them this is what I call model put them right on the corner of your brush like that tap it in 
light side, pick the light side of the flower, tap that in, then just lightly just kiss the surface on the other side. Sometimes I'll hit my finger taking off onto one side so I get that nice center in there. I'll reload right on that corner. We'll come down here, we'll put the light and this little bits onto the shadow side here take some of it off on the edges with your finger yeah and that looks pretty good and i might want to just for clarity here just restate a little heavier my stems again because i love stem movement coming into the flowers i love that in there let's um take a little light edge of light green here and just hit a suggestive vein line and I think I might want to lighten up this uh, this uh, one right the center leaf here just one more time so Hansa and pine green here a little more light here and just to give it a little more dose, let's go slightly more green right here as I come around to this side. Just push the color a little bit. Now see that just looks nice and blended, and you didn't. You just used just straight acrylic right here like this. Let's put a, dirty this up a little more green. And have just a different edge of that right there. Maybe an edge just to suggest another petal right there and that'll be pretty out like that and then now uh, what I'll probably do here is we'll do some uh, some golds and stuff here on the uh, maybe onto the edge and I'll just reach over here and grab some of my gold let's uh, find kind of a clean little spot here put that gold out and um, so that and it's just called gold it's the mica pigment of it i'm going to take my three quarter inch brush and i like to put down uh, i like to trim or frame it first so let's kind of frame it here take some of our yellows and our burnt sienna some of this color here maybe cool that off a bit a little bit of the lighten that just a bit here so it's not too dark of a frame it's a little too light dave Oh, somewhere around in here. I usually pull a color right in there or that's real close to that color that's right there. And I'll put that in here first, right around the edge, like that. Kind of frame that up a bit. And I might want to, because you got to remember acrylics do dry a value darker, so I might want to lighten that just a bit. And I just come through. And I like the edges to be modeled. So sometimes, you know, pick up a little more quinacridone or something and toss that in and through. That just gives you a little different color. And, you know, and it picks up the color of the rose in there. Here. Let's lighten that up a bit more. Here. But I like the whole process here to be modeled and uh, not exactly just a solid color I'm really really like that and so many people think oh you got to rush because it's gonna dry no you don't have to rush because it's gonna dry if it dries you just you just keep going you let the colors just sit there and and let them you know let them overlap each other let them shear what's called shear off and you know, they're, it's, it's all going to be fine. This is a high-grade acrylic. You don't have to worry about pulling holes and doing kinds of terrible things that we had with the acrylics that were made in the 60s and through the 80s and stuff. They just, they're different today. So we'll drop this in and just come around. And see, I can just go right into where I did over there before. And then I can make it all look really soft and blended and all that kind of stuff. I don't need to. I'm going to take the gold here, though. We'll take some of this gold. Maybe even lighten the gold a little. You can mix color into the gold. 
any kind of color. You can cool it, warm it, do all kinds of fun things with it. But uh, let's just take some of this and drive this right around the outside edge here. I want this to, the more you let it tack up, this color tack up, the brighter the gold will be because the gold won't mix down with any of the base color here. So I do like it to let it tack up a bit, but uh, we'll just show you here real quick. Because if I, if this uh, dries down and I want to make it brighter later, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, let it tack up just a minute and see, and I'll pull across and do things, and that'll make the gold shine just a little bit more. But uh, right now the color's wet, so it mixes really easy, so I don't want to brush it too much. You know, because each time you brush it, it'll just tone the gold as it mixes. But as soon as it dries, which will be just a few minutes, because I haven't added anything to slow it down, you could put it on brighter and brighter and you can decide that little brighter edge there as I go around again this is the base coat starting to tack up a little bit still tacky it's just a little tacky but it allows me to put the color on brighter so I use you know this you have the um, advantage of acrylics is that they that's one of their advantages is they do dry fast um, and you can and I use that I use that drying for glazing I use that drying for like here tacking I can put it on toned and then come around again here and uh, while it starts to tack up a bit and get it a little bit brighter I and I'm not I'm not constrained by the by the slow drying of the acrylics I can uh, work the drying time into some of my different techniques. And we have a lot of different techniques to make acrylics perform exactly like oils or look like oils, and you didn't, and you get it done pretty quick, okay? This is just one of many, 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 many different ways. So I'll just put a little bit more. I might let this tack up just a bit and just hit the edges one more little bit with bright, bright, bright color. Cause I do like that but I like it that how that kind of frames it all up you can paint with the gold right inside your uh, your painting just like it's a color as well you know there's no problem to that as well so it's a lot of fun but uh, here you go I'm probably just gonna come back in here and just I just saw this little blossom I want to lighten it up just one more little edge right where it comes up against that rose and this is where uh, what I do with my paintings is I don't even try to make exactly the same color because that gives you more interest. So many people are so afraid you got to make that color again. No, you don't. You just have to come optically close to that. And we'll make this a little lighter this time. I'm going to make it even a little bit more violet here. And pop this color up a bit more right here. And just pull that in right like that. And you can push it to shear it, which softens it out, makes it look more blended. But it'll just brighten that uh, little flower up again. I get that trinity of light right through there, which is what I like here. So I do like to do that in a painting. So that, that'll that work right there like that. that that's kind of pretty. And maybe hit the edge of this one here. So that turns that little blossom there let's put a little more violet into that too right in there pushing it out just like that maybe just touch and then Dave you have to stop playing you could play with these kind of things paintings and stuff all day but nope that's that's a good one that's call it we'll call that one okay thanks very much for joining me make sure that you um you know if you're interested in tray painting and stuff i do have online classes over on jansen art online jansenartonline.com you'll see some of those and uh, we run specials on those so go over and take a look um and if you're interested in seeing some of the trays i paint and sell and i paint and sell a lot of them you can go over to the gallery, to Jansen Online Gallery. We put up and remove uh, paintings that are sold that they do stay up for a little bit. So there's there's some right there in the sold paintings. You can look at what they were and some of the designs I think you'll, you'll enjoy. And some of them are global. Most of them are acrylic. But all of them are a lot of fun. Okay? Alrighty. I'll see you next time here on the channel. You take care.
Bye-bye.